you know you like it. Oh yeah. You know you like it, right? <laughs> big pink screwdriver. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about big pink screwdrivers today, even though I'm going to use it as a pointer. What we are going to talk about is this brake pad and rotor display. <laughs> Hi, Tom here from King's Auto Repair. And today I want to talk to you about how brake pads work. Uh, we got this set up here, donated to us by Advanced Car Quest. They sent us this over and we actually use this when we go out to teach kids about how stuff works on cars. So when we go out to a career day in the local area, we take this along. We got some other stuff we take along too. Kids are able to play, but you know what? There's plenty of adults out there that don't know how any of this stuff works. So in this video, what I want to do is show you what everything is in a brake system using this uh, display right here. And then... I'm going to give you a good bit of lingo where you will be able to understand what the mechanic's saying to you when he says this stuff, because we've all been to the doctor. We know that when the doctor tells you, you got a problem, you're like, I, I don't know what the words are and I don't know what they mean. Well, since we're the car doctors, I just want to make sure you know exactly what your mechanic's saying to you. So. Let's go take a look at this. What we got up here is our simulator for our uh, brake pedal. When you go to stop your car, what ends up happening is you push on the brake pedal and that has a little rod that goes through the firewall into a reservoir with a little piston. And you push on that and that pushes fluid out of what they call the master cylinder down through the metal lines to the hoses. Now, when that happens, you're basically squeezing on the fluid. So if you remember back to high school physics, you know the pressure you apply up here it will be the same pressure that's applied down at the caliper or wheel cylinder if you have drum brakes. So when we squeeze on this, this will simulate pressing on the brake pedal. The air will travel out of here and it will go down to this caliper and you will see it actuate the piston. So I'm going to push on it three, two, one, and and you can see that when I push down on it, all this clamped and this little piston right here moved this direction and it made this brake caliper here squeeze the brake pads against the rotor. And that's the action that stops the car. So if we had the car simulated going down the road, we'll simulate leaving off the brake pedal now, we have our wheel going around and we go and we press on that brake pedal, it stops and the caliper squeezing the brake pads holds this brake rotor in place. Your wheel would be bolted right here. When we release, it starts to go again and starts to move. That right there is the basics of how brake calipers work. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go into the different parts of the system. Like I explained before, this little bulb up here is taking the place of our brake master cylinder. This hose would be like the brake hoses and lines that go down to all four corners of the car to get the brake fluid to those areas. What we have here on our different parts of our brakes, this big silver piece right here is called the brake rotor. This clear piece right here is what we call the brake caliper. This would black piece here is your caliper mount. And if we set this down, and this is not how their brakes are really attached. We take this off here. We can get our caliper out of the way and we can get to our actual brake pads, which are on the inside here. And then what our brake pads sit in are the brake pad and caliper mount. This right here, this silver piece, is a piece of that the mechanics would call brake hardware or an anti-rattle clip. This clip helps keep brakes quiet. This uh, It takes up the space between the brake pad, the brake pad down here, when it goes in this slot, it takes up that space and keeps the pad from rattling back and forth in here because if you didn't have it you would hear it the pad move around and you would hear a knocking noise as you were stopping and this caliper or the brake rotor is going around 
over time, what ends up happening when mechanics say that you need brakes or your brakes are worn, what they're actually talking about is the brake pad here. And the brake pad is this green piece right here on this simulated brake pad. The backing plate is the black piece on the back here. And this, that the CarQuest label on it, is a brake shim. So when our brake pads go bad, or the mechanics say you need brakes, what has happened is all this has worn away, all this green part. Because if you remember, as we squeeze this, this brake pad makes contact with this rotor. And this piece here, the actual brake pad, is meant to wear off over time. And as that happens and it gets thinner, you're going to need to replace this. I have another simulator here. I want to grab it quick and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is um, another kind of show and tell piece we have. So uh, we have the dark green here, which uh, has a measurement of 12 millimeters. Uh, which is a very thick, showing a very thick brake pad yet. And then normal wear or moderate wear down to five and six millimeters, but you can see the thickness of it there. And then anything below four millimeters or four thirty seconds of an inch, we always talk about you should replace them. And the reason being that you want to replace them when they get this low is damage can be caused when this metal backing plate here ends up touching the rotor and it turns your brake job into a much more expensive uh, repair. As the brake pads wear, the other thing you want to pay attention to when they get down this low is there's an issue that can happen when the brake pads are getting older and the glue that holds the brake pad to the backing plate starts to give up and when it gets this thin it can't dissipate that heat well enough anymore and you can run the risk of this this pad piece actually coming off the backing plate as it ages um, it's not very common but we do see it happen it's um, we might see five or six cars a year that are like that so if we go back to our our simulator over here i want to do a little bit of explanation about what mechanics like when they tell you something and it's in that mechanic lingo and you're looking at them and you're like i have no idea what you're talking about well this is for you this is to help you understand mechanic lingo because a lot of times Mechanics, they work in it day in and day out, and they say, well, I know what this is. We have short-term, like, kind of acronyms for everything. And when somebody speaks those acronyms to you, you have no idea what they are. So I'm going to help you out right now. So the very first thing that I want to touch on is the metal to metal. We had talked a little bit about it before when I had pulled this out and said, you want to replace the brakes when they get to this. Well, if they do get to that backing plate and that metal backing plate touches the metal from the rotor here, that is what mechanics are referring to as metal to metal. That's when this whole green piece here is gone and the black piece is touching the silver right here. That's what mechanics are talking about when brakes are metal to metal. Another term you might hear them use with brakes is something is stuck or frozen. Generally, when they're talking about stuck or frozen, and I'm going to say this for the Northeast, which is where we're located, they could be talking about a couple different things. One is that the brake pad is stuck inside of this slide here. So when it does not move, it does not move in or out anymore. It is just stuck and will not physically come in or out anymore. They could be referring to it as a stuck brake pad or a frozen brake pad. The other thing that can stick, the other thing that can stick is this caliper slide pin here. This in the Northeast, these are, become a real problem. They get rust on them and they 
they're made to kind of float across there as the brake pad wears, they self adjust and they slide in and out of this bracket. And that allows for the adjustment to keep everything tight here. So they'll also say the caliper is stuck or frozen. That is generally referring to this slide pin here that doesn't allow the caliper to go in or out. Uh, when that happens, they can get really, really jammed up and cause a lot of odd brake wear or uh, reduced stopping. The other thing that can be considered stuck is this piston here. Uh, if you don't change your brake fluid often enough or your car doesn't rust, the brake lines don't rust out and it changes it on its own for you, uh, this piston, as it comes out, it has a little rubber seal in it and that little rubber seal can end up getting jammed up with dirt that is caused by corrosion from the brake fluid uh, in the caliper. And this piston will jam and not go back and it will basically keep, keep the brake pads clamped on like this and it will be very tough to move the wheel or very you'll see like reduced fuel mileage or stuff like that or weird stuff happening. This is where you get the smoking from the tire. The one last thing I want to touch on is why brakes squeak. And one of the reasons they squeak is they don't put enough grease on them when they put them together. All this stuff is made to kind of move together. And there's a lot of points you need to put grease on to keep the brakes quiet. These shims, They've done a great deal of work on them to help the, keep them quiet, but you definitely want to layer some brake grease across the back here. So when the caliper's touching here and this brake pad is moving around a little bit in there, the grease between the caliper and the brake pad will allow it to slide and not make huge amounts of noise. It might still make a tiny bit of noise, but not the squealing that you hear coming from a lot of brakes going down the road. A lot of that has to do with not enough lubrication on the brake pad mounts in these areas when you do the brakes, the slide pins, or grease on the back here. As we go wrap this video up, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Thank you and have a great day.